Josh Ernest, we want to get your take on uh, these comments about the president, uh, about his desire to cancel press briefings. Take a look. It's been well, 100 years we've been doing no, it. But listen, no, no, but, ne that. but there's never been action like this. This is crazy. I mean, but would you we're getting higher consider? ratings. They're getting higher ratings on those press conferences. Would you and, seriously consider stopping these press sessions? No, we do it in a different way. We How? do it. We do it through a uh, piece of paper with a perfectly accurate, beautiful answer. I'll give you an example. Uh, in writing? They, they're asked 100 questions or 50 questions or 20 questions. If they get one out of 50, just a little bit off, 5%, 10%, 20%. It's the next day, it's a front page story in every newspaper. Right. Um, okay, so he wants to shape his answers, Josh, to be perfectly beautiful. And yeah. it sounds to me like we're getting true? closer and closer to some sort of authoritarian, some sort of dictatorship. I mean, how does, does he know what he's saying, do you think? Um, I, I think he does. I mean, the, the real challenge for Trump in this situation is that uh, the press briefing sets up a scenario where you have, on the one hand, the president uh, and his staff, or the president's staff, extolling his virtues to a large television audience, something that President Trump likes almost more than anything else. On the other hand, you have the mainstream media holding his administration accountable for its words and its actions. Well, he doesn't Something like the way that, that's going. He doesn't like that at all. So uh, this is, uh, it's sort of, uh, you have like the, the, good, the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other as he tries to make this decision. He's going to keep the, the, the press briefing, but here, here's the thing. I, it, the president's setting up a false choice here. We, sh we as Americans shouldn't have to choose between no answers to questions and false answers to questions. Right. Why not, ju why not just empower a spokesperson <clears throat> to figure out the truth, why not just tell the truth to that spokesperson, and then send that person out there to answer questions. That doesn't mean that, 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 that it's easy, and it doesn't mean that person's gonna get it 100% right, but it's good, they're gonna get the important things right. And I think that's the real big, the, the problem here with the briefings thus far, is the most important questions that are being asked in the briefing room right now of President Trump's spokespeople are either not getting answers, as we saw with the questions about the taping system, or are getting answers that within 24 hours are proved demonstrably false. Uh, yeah, uh, just total just lies. And by the lies. way, Kellyanne Conway was on yesterday lecturing the media about just telling the truth. <laughs> We're going to have a greatest hits package of Kellyanne Conway coming up uh, to see whether she really is the best Arbiter person of... to be telling people what the truth is. And it's not because, as Josh Ernest says, they go out, and the next day, they're proven to be liars. Peter Baker, uh, interesting development this weekend. I've been, been monitoring conservative media to see when the dam will start to break and people will actually start being concerned. Conservatives will be concerned about uh, conservative values again. This weekend, very interesting. Charlie Sykes wrote in the New York Times about uh, the conservative movement and says that right now, the movement mirrors Donald Trump himself because at its core there are no fixed values, no respect for constitutional government or ideas of personal character, only a free-floating nihilism cloaked in insult, mockery, and bombast. And Charlie was talking about the anti-anti-Trump uh, in, in, in faction that has taken over the conservative movement and conservative media. Then you had Jonah Goldberg writing a powerful piece talking about how too many in the conservative movement have sold their soul for Trumpism. Well, I think part of I think the idea is here that rather than supporting Trump, they are reacting viscerally to the people who are attacking Trump. And so that rather than say, OK, I think that uh, the president is handling this right or that right, they they look at all this uh, mainstream media piling on him and, and they resent it. They think that uh, it's a bunch of elites on the coast who are uh, uh, out to get the guy who represents them. So that's the one thing I think really holding up his numbers right now uh, among Republican conservatives in particular because there's sort of, the, you know, all this criticism seems so uh, to them to be a function of uh, establishment uh, uh, reaction. And, you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, enough to hold them for the moment, but it's not a very positive force going forward, and it's kind of thing that doesn't stick around forever. We saw, you know, with George W. Bush for, you know, uh, uh, Joe, you obviously were part, you were part of that conversation back, back then where we saw the conservatives began to run away from him on Iraq at some point because it wasn't enough to simply say the other guys were wrong. And the question is at some point whether that happens here.
So, um, you know, it, it's a negative force rather than a positive force, and we'll see whether he can ever turn that around and make it more of a, a positive pro-Trump thing rather than an anti-anti-Trump thing. You know, it's interesting you say that, Mika, I was just thinking that, that you, you could look, we've been through this before with George W. Bush. It took three, two, three years, but I remember I wrote a book in 2004, Blasting Bush is a Big Spender and Having mm -hmm. Wilsonian Foreign Policy, and at the time, there was a Wall Street Journal editorial page that was there, but not a lot of conservatives. Peggy Noonan criticized George W. Bush at about the same time and got absolutely eviscerated. The Bush White House called speakers bureaus, had her speeches canceled. Everybody started calling her a lefty. Everybody started calling her a liberal. I was called a rhino because we were attacking Bush for spending too much and his Wilsonian foreign policy. Republicans who swore if they get back in power again would not repeat the same mistakes are now repeating the same mistakes but even worse not only are they supporting a guy that's going to bring the federal debt to 30 trillion dollars they're also supporting a guy that is shredding constitutional norms after they've been going around for 30 blanking years with a constitution hey, get, look, look it's right here i believe in this look it's right I, everywhere i went they all carried con look and then shove it in your face why don't you open it up and read it Ooh and stop worshiping power and read that constitution that you've been carrying around in your pocket for 30 years. Because this is even worse than the kowtowing you did for Bush. And that is saying a lot. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.